Okay, it is March 22nd, 2014, and this is the latest Space Nerds in Space update. Um, so what you're looking at here is two, two client programs connected to the server, and if you, if you notice, I've zoomed in on an asteroid, and I'm as zoomed in as far as I can go. But the interesting thing to note here is that the two asteroids in the two clients are precisely synchronized in their rotation. You see they look exactly the same in both clients. And that is something new that uh, Jeremy Van Grinsven has been working on for quite some time is, is uh, of course, they're they're right in the sun so now these asteroids are very hard to see but that's been something that he's been working on for quite a while to uh, get that get that synchronization working and it's not only the rotation it's um, making the the prediction on the client side be deterministic and making sure that updates from the server to the client are um, delivered in a deterministic and fair fashion. I mean, previously we had been, previously the algorithm that I had put together, uh, essentially for things that were close to the player ship, the updates were delivered every time, and then things that were far away, I sort of randomly, 15% of the time, just didn't send the updates. And now the updates are, for things that are close, are still sent all the time. And then for things that are far away, the, the way that it's, the way the updates are dropped is f more fair and more evenly distributed than what I had been doing previously. And you can see this a little bit. I mean, we might be able to see it here. If I zoom in on this planet over here, we may be able to see... there are ships around it maybe there aren't and maybe it's too far away if you zoom in sometimes on a planet that's you know halfway across the galaxy and you can see let's see if I can find one maybe this one sometimes you can see the ships moving around and since they're so far away maybe the updates aren't uh, doesn't look like I'm going to be able to find it Anyway, maybe since the updates aren't happening every single time, sometimes you'll see some kind of uh, quantized, let's say, uh, jumping around. Okay, so that's that. Let's see, what else have I done? Um, so I have changed a little bit of the way the... Uh, the robot drives around. So, previously there was a whole lot of slipping and sliding around. It was like the oil, the floor was covered in oil. And it still has a little bit of oil, but it doesn't have nearly as much slipping and sliding as you used to have. My, the thought here was that it was difficult enough as it was, and adding all this slipping and sliding around while entertaining um, made it a little bit too difficult. So the robot is a little bit easier to drive around, I think, now. Um, let's see, what else? Um, probably the most exciting new thing that we've done is Jeremy has figured out how to use Blender and do some UV mapping of the models. So now we have some nice UV maps for the models. And so we get, now I, I did the texturing on this one and it's not, you know, wonderful, but it's not, it's also kind of not, not horrible and it's better than the plain vanilla that we had. So I got these kind of rusty spots that you see, or maybe, you know, laser holes or I don't know what, I don't know what, but, uh, you know, so this is Disruptor. 
model and if you notice I don't know if you can see this on the video um, there's some specular reflection happening uh, which is kind of cool so that the, it's kind of shiny I, I suspect you probably can't see that on the video and the design I did here you know is mostly a, mount, a matter of it's mostly white with some accents and on the white parts I put some rusty you know laser holes or whatever um, and then it has a kind of I you can't really fail to notice that it's heavily influenced by Star Wars especially this part here on the back where you got these little blocks like this um, that is you know looks like R2D2 pretty much except red um, so that's our disruptor model and we should be as now that we now that Jeremy I should say we I need to still learn um, now that Jeremy knows how to do UV unmapping we should be having some better better looking models coming up we're also probably now that we also know how to do UV mapping and texturing a little bit better um, we're probably going to be dropping some of the you know models that we don't like um, especially in the beginning when I was doing totally software rendering and I didn't have any OpenGL stuff at all um, I was trying to keep really low polygon models and uh, now that we have hardware acceleration it's not clear that those low poly models are worth keeping so we may be dropping some of those models and adding different models or enhancing the models that we got but it just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to spend a lot of effort UV mapping and texturing models that are kinda of crappy you know what I mean so um, in any case uh, this is kind of cool and uh, so we're making good progress there um, let's see what else um, oh let's so another thing that we've changed is Starship has joined. Let's see where are the weapons. Here we go. The weapons. So, so the weapons look a little different. They're more. Um, there's a couple different things about them. Um, number one, they're more sort of volumetric. Previously, they were um, they were done by. Uh, axis aligned billboards which means that the lasers were essentially two dimensional flat paintings that were um, aligned along the axis that the laser was traveling but all but the so so there's several different orientations it could be but so there was one constraint there and then the other constraint was to sort of face the camera but essentially they were two dimensional and now we have I should I say we Jeremy did all this um, the lasers are now using a system that is much more like what the exhaust plumes are using so they're more of a particle based three-dimensional system and that's one change so you got this more volumetric um, kind of laser fire um, and then the other thing is that the way that it looks like if I fire every once in a while you get this nice strong beam but if I just le lean on the button then you see after a period of time it, you know if I fire every once in a while you get this nice strong beam and if, if you just lean on it you get this weaker looking beam and that's due to um, the laser power sort of so this gauge 
here. Um, if you kind of deplete the power, then you get a weaker beam, and, and the appearance of the beam, the rendering of the beam, is also kind of weaker. So that's all done in the shader, and that's all uh, Jeremy's work there. Um, let's see what else. So we got that covered. That um, used to be the case that the the, the ships would quite often uh, drive directly into the interior of planets. They don't do that so much anymore. I think I, I think I fixed that. Um, as a side effect of that, they sometimes now get stuck and kind of wiggle around. That's a bug I'm still working on. But at least they don't drive into the interior of planets anymore. Let's see. Is there anything else? I think those are the main things. I think the most sort of dramatic uh, thing that's been added to the game recently is the texture on that the one disruptor ship. This guy, you know, that that is probably the most sort of visually noticeable thing which we've added to the game lately. And we'll probably still be working on this because I think the sort of the scale of these kind of blemishes is maybe too big for what the ship is. So, you know, maybe these little blemishes need to be um, smaller relative to the ship. And that's probably just a matter of scaling the texture down a little bit. Um, so I don't think that's a big deal to fix or anything, but uh, let's see, is there anything else? I think that's all the things I wanted to mention. Anyway, progress, progress is being made. So Space Nerds in Space, if you're uh, wanting to play this game, it is on GitHub. Um, currently, it is only distributed in source form, so you have to compile it yourself. Um, maybe at some point we will address that, but for right now, that's how it is. So, uh, that's it for the end of March 2014, Space Nerds in Space.